Hello folks, I hope you're having a great day today. Hey, today I'm going to take a look at another story in the John the Balladeer series by Manly Wade Wellman. Uh, this particular uh, version of his stories collects all of them. So I have all of the short stories as well as a couple that were not published um, during his time um, that are here in this collection for you. But today basically what I want to do is take a look at another short story in it. The short story we're taking a look at today is I Wonder As I Wander, which talks about some various kind of flash moments in kind of John's life. So the short story, the, we took a look previously at Oh Ugly Bird, which is the first short story that kind of creates the character in 51 uh, for the famous um, and big fantasy and science fiction magazine that has a number of the biggest stars that are out there writing. Um, it resonated with audiences so much that this character was written in that magazine throughout the 50s. Um, there are 11 total stories in seven years in the 50s um, that are published. He'll then come back to it with the same magazine about five years later in 62. This is the first story, um, I Wander As I Wonder, um, that is set after a four or five year hiatus. So we're going to take a look at it. I think it's interesting what he'll be to have done with the character in the meantime. Um, also, the next story um, that he publishes the next year in 63 um, is, a, is going to to be similar because what he's going to do with it, he's going to actually play with the genre a little bit uh, with this character which I like um, and I enjoy how he does that. So we're going to take a look at that. I'm actually going to read a page out of this for you so you can feel what it is that I saw and what, what, what resonated with me earlier today as I read the story. I thought it would be fun for me to review it for you the same day as I wrote it <laughs> uh, so I can review it for you when it's still fresh in my mind. Um, anyway, uh, for those of you who may not remember, uh, Manly Way Wellman was a person who was a bigger name in the pulps. Um, he uh, was um, born in um, Africa, an African Portuguese colony um, over near Angola. Um, his dad was a doctor. He tours um, he and saved many people there. He'll tour um, Europe, move back to the United States, live in the deep um, Appalachian Mountains of Carolina. He'll write for the pulps. He'll start writing for Weird Tales in the 20s. Um, he'll write for a lot of other pulps during his time too. Um, and eventually write novels, short stories, novellas, other sorts of uh, things that he'll write. He's, he's a pretty prolific writer, and he'll write for pretty much his entire career and up through the early 80s. He's heavily influential on a lot of different people. He has a couple of really interesting ideas. Um, he was in, for example, Appendix N by Gary Gygax. So if you were familiar with Appendix N um, and Gary Gygax in the early days of Dungeons & Dragons, you'll see where his influences are. And my first um, video on this particular character, which I'll link to you below, so you can check it out. I pointed out that I feel like John the Balladeer feels like a proto-bard in a lot of ways. Like if you take this story and publish it today, the character would feel like he's a modern bard um, archetype, even though he's not. He came out more than 20 years before the game. So anyway, um, so that's there. Uh, but again, 1963-2, we'll be taking a look at the story, um, I Wonder as I Wonder. Now, the character Silver John... Uh, the, um, or, or John the Balladeer. He's called both in the story. Um, he has no last name. He is a person who's living in the backwoods of the Carolinas. He travels from town to town helping people or and um, singing. He has a guitar with silver strings that can help him deal with some of the magical stuff that's happening. Sometimes he just has to smack it with his guitar. He'll break the guitar, but take out the person with the strings and he's fine with that. <laughs> uh, but the silver uh, is particularly helpful for him. He also will sing. He has the magic in his voice, he'll use it to inspire people, to cast out demons, to, to expel ghosts, to deal with a number of sort of evil things that are happening, or, or to help people out in a number of ways, which we'll be taking a look at one of those stories here in a moment. So that's who Silver John is. He's a unique character in the backwoods of Appalachia, and Manly Wade Wellman will write like him since he's the one, he's a point of view character for these stories. So Manly Wade Wellman will write in his um, sort of way of speaking, his way of thinking, and use words that he would use. Um, so it's in, so it's it's interesting to me how different this is in tone from say the Cthulhu Mythos works that <laughs> Mealy Lee Wellman did as an example, uh, which are just incredibly different in tone in the, in the language used. Um, they read very differently. Um, he he's, he's a master. He's he's very much a chameleon, um, and I appreciate that from him. Um, his his this the the words that are used uh, the point of, for his point of view character shows his point of view character very nicely. It's not just a point of view character with the normal language that I use for my writing. He has limited his word choices. He uses inflections, um, unusual ways, sometimes of saying something just like the people there would. Um, I appreciate that. And as somebody who grew up in Southern West Virginia, I appreciate that more. Now, what I'm going to do for you um, is talk a little bit about I Wonder as I Wonder, and then I'm going to read for you a page story out of it. So what I Wonder as I Wonder is, it's about a six-page short story in my collection here. Um, it, it's about... Um, it, it gives you a number of short vignettes, some of which are just quick little five paragraph things, sometimes a half a page, sometimes a full page. 
of different quick little slices of life from John the Balladeer and his travels. Um, so the idea is that even though it's published as a short story, you're going and reading a number of these smaller short stories that are more like flash fiction. I like that he's playing with the genre, um, even though this is a short story collection, <laughs> um, but he's playing with it and giving you just quick, a quick little snapshot of a quick little encounter that he has had with somebody. Um, I enjoy him doing that. Um, again, I've also talked before about how he can definitely make his characters and the, and the language of his characters seem of the time, and as somebody who's from that era, I, I definitely agree with that. So what I, I actually have um, my normal sort of, I try to, to keep my southern West Virginia accent out. Um, it's a central Appalachian accent. It's not a southern accent. Um, it's distinct from it, but I try to keep it out of my professional work and as much as possible. I've tried to keep it out of these videos. <laughs> Although I'm sure at times I've probably slid into it or have allowed some cracks in the facade here and there. It happens. It's fine. But what I'm going to do for you now is sort of write my, is sort of read for you this story. Um, and it's a page long. It's called Blue Monkey. Um, and again, my goal here is to kind of read to you in my natural sort of West Virginia style of reading, which I think will help to set it better. I'm also going to link you to it below uh, so you can read it um, yourself and check it out yourself too. Um, the short story, I Wonder as I Wonder, which in this collection. Um, but again, I'm going to be reading for you the Blue Monkey. Now here I'm going to show you what this kind of looks like in here. I've talked about how these are little vignettes. I'm going to be reading for you Blue Monkey. It starts here. It goes from here and then it will finish up here. And it's got a lot of uh, dialogue in it and stuff too. So it's not, it's, it's basically a full page. Uh, so you get an idea of how big it is, what I'm talking about. So here we go. You ready? Let's go ahead and do this then. I'll turn this pot full of pebbles into gold, the fat man told us at midnight. If you all keep from thinking about a blue monkey. He poured in wine, olive oil, salt, and with each he said a certain word. He put the lid on and walked three times around that pot, singing a certain song. But when he turned the pot over, just the pebbles poured out. Which of you was thinking about a blue monkey? They all admitted they'd thought of nothing else, except me. I'd striving to remember exactly what was been said and done. Then everybody vowed the fat man gold-making joke was the laughingest thing they'd ever seen in a long spell. One midnight a year later and far away, I shoveled pebbles into another pot at another doings and told the folks, I'll turn them into gold if y'all keep from thinking about a red fish. I poured in the wine, the olive oil, the salt, saying the word that went with each. I covered the pot up, walked about it three times, sang the song, and then I asked, did anybody think about a blue monkey? But John, said the prettiest lady there, you, you said not to think about a red fish. And that's what I couldn't put from my mind. And then I told them that I said that to keep you from thinking about a blue monkey and tried to tip the pot over for him. But it would turn too heavy to move. I lifted the lid. There inside the pebble shone yellow. The prettiest lady picked up two or three. They clinked together in her pink palm. Gold, she squeaked. Enough to make you rich, John. Divide it up amongst yourselves, I said. Gold's not what I want, nor yet richness. Anyway, there you go. And again, I put it in my, my normal sort of native uh, West Virginia voice for you, so you can kind of see it, and it's hopefully more of its native content. But can you see how the language and the grammar uh, with it is, is, is very much a down-home Appalachian style of speaking and talking and then seeing things. Um, and, and I appreciate that there is an authenticity to this story and the series that you will not normally see in writings of this type. So uh, this is my second and my final one. This is the story again from 62 called I Wonder As I Wander that has a number of these short small vignettes for you. But there you are. There's um, the second. And this will probably be the last time that I visit it. I've pretty much visited finished the book. Most of them are shorts, are horror shorts that will use traditional horror tropes, but in a different setting, a different context, um, and in a different way. But it will still have some of the same things. You'll come across things like Washington's ghost, George Washington's ghost, uh, and stuff like that. So that's <laughs> what the fun little moments in it, um, and so forth. But I'll leave you there to it. Check out yourself. Again, I'll link you to the collection below. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below if you agree or disagree with anything or my way of uh, of giving you the story in my own native West Virginia voice. If that was something that you liked or didn't like, feel free to let me know. I appreciate it. And hey, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, we all have such busy days and busy lives. So the fact that you spent this time with me is something very humbling. And if you enjoyed this short story, and if you enjoyed this review, please feel free to hit that subscribe button because there's going to be so many more reviews of these classics, these forgotten works that are out there. And so again, I appreciate it. You have a good one.